designing future cities and future buildings going to be way different from the history as we know. And Yumeri was involved in a multimobile project in Manhattan, New York, in designing for the Lever House. It's one of the historical buildings in New York. And uh, you won competition between different universities. You got first place for that design. I'd like to pick up your brain today about it. How did you design that amazing building to make a better future? Well, that's a big statement. <laughs> um, I first want to say I'm looking at this project from the perspective of like I did this eight months ago. So I have a different perspective now when I was than when I was doing it. So I'm Interesting. I'm kind of looking back at it as like that was then. Now this is me now. I've been in the field for eight months working with real clients and budgets. So I'm an interior architect. I work with a structural engineer and currently we are doing ADUs, remodels, pavilions. We do a lot of residential work. And so it's very much the real world with real prices. <laughs> I keep going back to that because in college at the University of Tennessee, when I studied architecture, it was you're living in this concept world where anything is possible. Yes. You are constantly, it's like a fairy tale and anything you think of can can be your concept. You know, there's no budget, there's no, there's no anything real. And so um, with that in mind, now that I'm looking back at it, I was like, wow, that was out there. <laughs> you know, like I'm thinking about it. Like today, I don't know if I could even have the opportunity of doing that. And I miss thinking in this realm because it's so optimistic of what the future can hold for us. For some cities, future are far away in the future. But for some cities, future is today's reality. And tell us about your Lever House project. What you guys did there for Manhattan, New York? So we were placed in the studio. We were selected to be in a studio of 16 people. Uh, half of us were architecture major and half of us were interior architecture major. How they selected those people to be in one group? They never told us, but from what we understand, it's based on GPA, it's based on your background, based on... They just wanted a good mix of students and brains. Each team was put together based on the study that they studied. So it, it, we had two of architecture and two of interior, so four people per project, me meaning we had four teams. And how we got to those teams was based on the animals that we studied. You study animals in University of architecture Design? <laughs> it's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Looking back at I'm like reflecting on what we did because it was it's nothing that I do today for work. But um, yes, we were asked to study um, a living species. So it could be rocks, it could be animals, it could be plants, it could be bacteria, you know, and then we dissected that study and we diagrammed that. We did that, we figured out what our animals or living species were good at and we took all of those and we said, okay, so if we wanted to create a futuristic building, what categories of animals would make sense together? Because you don't want to have like all fish in one group. Yeah. Because then you're not really um, pushing yourself to the next level, right? Okay. So that aside, we got our, got into our teams and it went from there. And we got first place for the competition, yeah. Wow. But it was, it was more than just getting first place because this project really pushed the boundaries of what could be the future. And it made everybody around us who was involved think about the future in a different way. And what is going to be the new normal for us? Because we started this project in August of 2019. That was before COVID. Wow. And we designed essentially for COVID during that process. Interesting. Yeah, it was really interesting, the whole thing. But we were given a site. So we had options to pick our site. Um, we chose to go with the Lever House in New York City on Park uh, Avenue. Okay. Uh, the reason why we chose that site was because it was, first of all, built in the late 50s, early 60s. And... Back in the day, with that kind of um, building structure, it was the only building on Park Avenue that was made out of glass. Everything else was brick. 
Wow. So when people are walking on the street in the early 60s, they're like, holy shit, this is the future. This is, you know, <laughs> it's, it was insane, right? And so yeah. <clears throat> all these years go by. We're now in 2019. Nobody's using this building. Okay. It is, a, is vacant. It's been vacant for over 30 years. Oh, my gosh. And the reason why it's vacant is because it was designed for a nine to five work life. It okay. was designed for people to come in, sit in a cubicle, 9 a.m. and leave at 5 and that's it. And that was the, the structure and people don't work like that anymore. Yeah. People work in their kitchen, in their car. And you know, what does work look like today for us? And so that was, a, that really co connected with us because we as architecture students, we work in the middle of the night. You, we're not, you, you know, you're not going to be able to go to this building in the middle of the night to work. That was not possible back in the day. Yeah. So that really hit home with us. So we were like, we're going to use this site. This is what we're going to do. Okay. And that's how we came up with the site. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And um, you were studying animals as well to build these buildings. And you was working on a specific animal. What kind of influence on those buildings that animals have? So we were asked to pick a living organism to study. We studied it. We diagrammed it. We researched it for like a whole month. Um, and the animal that I chose to, to study was the puffer fish because I was interested in how it expands and contracts when it senses danger. Okay. And what that looks like is based on the amount of collagen fibers that are located in the skin. Where those collagen fibers are located and how dense they are can determine the elasticity and how far a puffer can extract. Puffer fish are really cute, I think, <laughs> but they are extremely dangerous if, they, uh, if you get poked by one or bit by one, they can kill you. So yeah, I diagrammed it. There are different sections that I took of the puffer and that's a 3D model of a section that I thought formally uh, was nice because you can start to seeing, you can start seeing those forms as a ceiling, as a floor, as probably another level. And you can start imagining people walking in and out of that space based on that form. My team members studied brine shrimp. One of them studied the Arctic fox. The other one studied a stingray, all which have unique qualities and features that make the animal resilient and, ad and adapt to its surrounding. Uh, the cool thing by studying animals first is that you could pull concepts from that and then put that into the physical building or the shell that you're working with. Some of the concepts that we chose to go with is skin elasticity, meaning being able to stretch and being able to sh shrink. And we incorporate that into the building by using a fabric. Another concept that we liked is that brine shrimp in the sea filter the water. So that's where the idea came from for creating a material that could filter air so that people weren't feeling worried if they were around other people. Interesting. And taking those concepts from animals and putting them into life is what the, our process was at the time. Uh, Stingray doesn't have any bones, even though it is uh, pretty much it's like all collagen. And they the way that they move in the water is where we got the form for the exterior structure of the building. And so the process was a lot of 3D modeling, <laughs> a lot of diagramming, a lot of uh, sitting down and talking, a lot of design thinking, a lot of sticky notes, a lot of going back and forth. But ultimately we came up with something that got us first place and push the way that people can see the future because that is ultimately what we want to do. We want to push what other people see and what they think the future is going to look like. Let's talk about concept for that building level by level and uh, about those landing platform for those flying cars. When the people going to be stepped out from those flying Uber taxis, what they're going to see? when they get to that building. To think about the programming of the building, we thought initially first about the site, you're located in New York City. The first three floors has to be for the public. That's what they were originally in the Lever House and we wanted to honor that. The original Lever House had has a pavilion um, and it had, uh, nothing was happening on the ground level other than columns. And when people are walking on the street, they can choose to walk under these columns and kind of, uh, experience a moment and have a little bit of a relationship with the building. So we chose to honor that. There are certain things in terms of a historic building that you want to keep and you want to honor. And in this case, that's what we did. We actually elevated the moment even more by creating an amphitheater down there. And um, 
I think one of the photos that you can look at would be that section right there. Mm -hmm. um, it is, yeah, right there. And if you see, there is sort of um, an amphitheater. And uh, when you walk somewhere in New York City, it's very overwhelming. But you can choose to walk down those steps and look up and see this beautiful moment of fabric and experience the building in a different way while you're walking to your destination. It's just something that you do in between and it elevates your experience of the city too, right? And so that program down there was for entirely made for the public. As you enter up, uh, go up to uh, the other stories of the building, you are kind of limited access. So the next portion is we were thinking primarily for businesses or companies that need to rent spaces that need to rent two floors at a time to work in we decided to do two floors at a time because we were thinking to interact the floors not all floors to just be you know block 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 create some kind of stairs and some kind of openings that when you have people on the bottom floor and the top floor they have perspectives to see one another so that space we were thinking of like renting out to people the next phase above that is where the uber air lands and we decided to put that in the center of the building like i was saying because of that all of that open space that you have in front of the lever house um just made the most sense for the uber air to land there and i'm not gonna we were not gonna push back what made sense right yeah. so that's where they land and how they land is the uber aircraft will have a sensor that will make the landing pad react and when the landing pad senses that an airplane helicopter i don't even know what they're going to call this other than uber air approaching it will um it will pull out on I, I have a diagram somewhere here but it will basically it will basically pull out a landing pad and it will come out the plane will land on this landing pad and then it will retract back um once it retracts back the people are safe to come out and they come out into a park into a park and they're able to see so we had four of these landing pads for four different aircraft they're amazing but we decided to make the park up there so that people can also wait there if they're waiting on an aircraft and they're not just waiting in like a building they're waiting outside with views um and so on and so forth so that's the center of the building the upper portion of the building we decided to create a capsule hotel hotel which is a really big deal especially in japan and china i know capsule hotels are very very common we're bringing that to the to to here too because a lot of people want to you know go on business trips and you don't want to have to go to stay at a, at a hotel in this case you can fly in have your have your meeting go upstairs sleep and leave the next day everything is in one space you're not required to leave this building or this site there's restaurants there's cafes there's gyms there's you know you have everything in one spot for you the cool thing is with the capsules is I ha we made a diagram about how the capsules move and how they function and same kind of retracting system. Um, each capsule hotel has a glass box that is within it and each floor plan is special to that box. So that box will retract if you so choose, there will be a button. You don't have to do this if you want because it's kind of scary. <clears throat> but the point of, of this box retracting and you being in this and having these views of, of uh, Central Park because that's where this is facing is to change your perspective on how you see your business. Very interesting. To change your perspective on how you do your work. Because when you give people when you when you give people a different point of view, they start changing how they think about their life. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna feel more safer, right? Like more safe, more excited, and uh, it's gonna yeah. be great buildings. I wish we can have more more projects like this in New York. Yeah. And not just New York, like everywhere. Yeah, so that that was that was the thought behind that. The idea of having a Uber Air that lands into a building that is all AI, all innovative, all future thinking is you as a human don't have much to do. <laughs> <laughs> you just get in there, walk in and talk to the people that you need to talk to, go upstairs, take a nap and leave. You don't have to do much. <laughs> so you're kind of uh, 
giving all this responsibility to AI. And it should, that's what AI should do. It should make our life easier. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's very interesting. Thank you so much, Mary, for coming today. Thank you so much for being on my podcast. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye.